So what if you had like clear signs to look out for? like a sensor, like a check engine light, clear signs in a relationship or a conversation that would tell you there's a problem here, there's an issue here, person is struggling, red flags, um, you know, be on guard, be careful. What if you had that? Well, I'm gonna give it to you today. I'm Zalman Nelson, welcome to the therapy studio. I'm an online therapist and I help people uplift their relationship with themselves, which then uplifts their relationships with everybody else. So I'm gonna talk to you today about Four, but it's kind of like three and a half, because I think the fourth is uh, a different type of a red flag, a bit. It's not automatically guaranteed. A horrible, terrible person push the nuclear button and blow them away. But but this is also uh, one of the beautiful things that I love about this medium and YouTube, being able to talk to you like this, is as I'm working with people, I'm talking to people, ideas are forming, I'm seeing clarity, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing what people go through day after day, hour after hour, session after session, thousands of sessions, these patterns, you know, and where it occurs, it starts to clarify and crystallize. All of my ideas that I get to share here on uh, YouTube with you and in my videos are based upon what I've learned, what I've witnessed, what I've experienced, what I've experimented with on myself, and what I see people going through, and I see that it works, and I see that it's real. And that's why I like sharing things. I think it needs to be practical and real and helpful. And this was crystallized a couple hours ago as I was uh, talking to somebody who was dealing with some difficult people, giving them uh, a pretty hard time. Generally speaking, let me give you a preface, okay? Um, I Here's what I notice, is that when a person has uh, emotional wounds, call it baggage, call it damage, patterns, things that need their attention, unmet emotional needs in their life, starting as a kid and they've continued and they've developed certain kind of like coping mechanisms that don't really work so well. Usually it's a, it's a form of avoidance, call it an addiction form of avoidance, blaming, arguing, projecting, whatever it is. But they develop, that's, those are the struggle points. Those are the issues. Those are the challenges that people have and they're not facing themselves. They're not connected to themselves. They're not tuning in. There's an inner kid who absorbs some things, some struggles, either things we needed as a kid, reassurance, validation, security, love, care, or there were things that we got that were hurtful and we wish we didn't have. And so the person has wounds, has things that need attention. Our work here is I'm going to be the parent. I have two parts. Until I was 12, 13, I was a kid part alone. I absorbed all of those messages from how I was raised. I go into this in other videos and we'll keep talking about it. But I absorbed all those messages. And then this adult part starts to kick in. As I go into adolescence, I start to become more mature. There's these two voices within me, these two senses of self, two sets of emotions. I can be confident and totally fearful at the same time. That's where it's at. Anyway, the person is progressing, but they've not tuned into or touched on any of these kinds of things. They haven't healed. A lot of people really will present as children in adult bodies. It's the only way to explain their behavior. They don't mean wrong, they don't mean bad. There's a part of them that desperately needs attention and hasn't gotten it. And so here's what happens is I think that people will be very self-absorbed. I'm not gonna call it narcissism, although that happens, but people are self-absorbed. And I don't even think they mean it bad. It's almost like a natural defense. Part of them is desperately trying to grab their attention, saying, hey, there's something inside that needs your attention. You have a kid inside that has unmet emotional needs to feel validated, worthy, loved, supported, cared for, <clears throat> allowed to express him or herself. And it's not being tended to. And everything is external and controlling others and manipulating others and fighting and arguing and everything's external. You know, everything, every conversation is he said, she said, he said, she said, but yeah, but what were you feeling inside? Nope, there's a wall. And so there's this part inside that's desperate for attention. And our, the, the person's focus remains stuck within themselves, okay? And the self-absorbed, I like to call it self-absorbed. Um, they're just ready to consume within themselves. Why? The hope is that while they're there, they'll start to tune in and connect with what they feel. It obviously doesn't always happen, but that's the hope. Now, while a person's in this state, and some people spend a lifetime here, it's painful, but they're very self-consumed, they're very absorbed with self, but they're not really tuning into what's going on with them. So they're not really aware of what's happening around them. They're not aware of how they are impacting other people. And so, but at the same time, you can't not work on some of these things. Emotions keep coming up. You can't keep like pushing a ball under the water and don't think it's going to pop up in certain ways. And things come out sideways all over the place. Okay. Now, that was a long introduction. I'm glad you're still here. Um, thanks for hanging in with me. Um, that's the person where they're coming from. Okay. And a person in that state 
may do any one of the next four things I'm going to tell you um, because they're not in touch with themselves, uh, because they're not self-aware yet. And this is a sign, a danger sign. I, you know, I, I, I like my clients to start to build uh, like a dashboard, you know, check engine lights, sensors that say, hey, something needs your attention. It's not necessarily bad or good. Something needs your attention. Please tune in. Please check in. A check engine light is not bad. It's just telling you there's something here. Plug in the computer, check it out and see what's going on with the car. Even low fuel is not bad. Maybe it's irritating to pick up fuel, but I'm certainly happier that I know about it. I was saved the other day from getting stuck. My daughter was saved from getting stuck because of the sensor of uh, the low tire pressure it kept coming up, coming up, coming up, realized that there was an issue and we were able to prepare in advance for it and kept an eye on it. And instead of being out on the highway somewhere with a, with a flat tire, we were able to get it fixed. So a sensor is, is just giving us information. It's a good positive thing. So I want to give you four tools. I want to put four tools into your tool belt that when you see this, when you, when you encounter it, I want you, the siren should go off, the, that you, your sensor should go off. Something's going on. There's something about the person I'm talking to that they don't necessarily consciously intend me bad or wrong, but at the same time, there's something unhealthy and I've got to protect myself. And both are true at the same time because they're two parts, remember. But I can have compassion. The person's struggling, difficult. They don't know where, they don't know what they're, what's going on, what they're going through. And at the very same time, I've got to say no and stay back and be mindful. There's something unhealthy here. So let's go through these three points and then I want to get to the last point, the fourth point. You'll tell me what you think about it, but these are the first three are absolutely clear. When you see them, it's a sign that the other person has uh, an issue, they're struggling, they're not self-aware, you're at, you're at great risk to be hurt without them even realizing that it's going on. The first one is double standards. You're talking to somebody and you notice they're applying a standard to you that they don't apply to themselves. Very often we then, out of our own struggles to feel valid and worthy, we'll react in a way of, no, I have to explain it to you and prove it to you, or no, it's not fair that you don't hold yourself. And then they go, oh, you're just doing tit for tat kind of a thing. And the whole conversation spins and the original point is lost. Double standards, put that in your tool belt. When you encounter a double standard, your sensor should now go off. We put the first sensor in over here on your dashboard. There's the first one. Second sensor I want you to think about. The person will say to you that you are doing X. You're doing X, okay? Here's the problem. You aren't doing X at all, and they are doing X, and they're not aware, just not aware at all. So that's the second sensor. Let's put that one over here. Second sensor in your dashboard is if I'm interacting with somebody and I'm suddenly accused of something that I know I'm not doing, and I see them doing it, I got something else is going on over here. There's an elephant in the living room with all these points. It's the other person has triggers, has struggles, has emotional wounds that they're not tending to. Okay, so the first was double standards. The second was accusing you of what they're doing. Here's the third. Okay, you start to share with somebody your feelings. This is what I feel when you did this. I feel like this. That's a very healthy way to speak. It's called I feel statements. Uh, When you do this, I feel like this. When you say this, I feel like this. When you don't do this, when you don't say this, I feel like this. Easy to say. I'm using feelings. That's another reason we use a feelings chart here is so that we have words to communicate to other people with. Instead of saying you do this and you're a jerk, that's hard to hear. But when you do this, I feel like this. If I tell my part when you do this, I feel close, I feel love, I feel warm. Wow, now they know what to do more of. When I say when you do this, I feel rejected, hurt, and and discredited. Now they know what to do less of. That's a side point. We'll get into that more. Um, and if you want to touch more on these topics that I'm going into, please hit me up in the comments. So you're talking to someone, you're sharing your feelings. All you need, all anyone needs when we share feelings is to feel heard and understood, which I go into other videos as well. So important. You don't have to fix it, you don't have to make it better, you don't even have to agree with me. I just need to feel heard and understood. Okay. If you get a response, this is your third sensor over here. If you get the following response, your, your, your light should go off, your sensor should go off. The person flips it and makes it about them. You're making me feel bad. You're making calling me a bad friend. You're saying I'm hurting you. I just express what I feel. That's all. All I need is for you to hear me. You know, the particular issue was reaching out for help and there was no response from anybody. It was like, hey, I felt really hurt that nobody responded. And their response was, oh, you're saying I'm a bad friend. You're telling me I'm a bad friend. You're accusing me. You're criticizing. It was like, whoa. Clear red flag, that's number three. Here's number four, which is, you'll let me know what you think. I don't know that it's necessarily 
a, a major red flag and an issue, but it's a similar case. You're sharing with another person, okay? And the response that you get back is not that they make it about them, although it is about them. You'll see in a second why. The response you get back is that the person starts right away. There's no acknowledgement. Oh, that sounds terrible. You must be hurting, in a lot of pain. None of that. The response you get is, here's what you should do to fix it. Here's some advice. How to make it go away. How to deal with it. How to respond. What you should do. Which, think about this for a second. I just told you what I'm going through. Your response to me was how to make it go away. In essence, you're telling me I shouldn't feel what I feel. You're rejecting me. I, I don't find that that's necessarily as difficult of a person who's struggling. It's typically someone who they themselves are uncomfortable with emotions. But they're not rejecting you. They're not hurting you consciously necessarily. They are trying to be helpful. But still, put it over here. That's your fourth sensor that there's something is, is not okay and, and is off. I mean, this is a person, they, they're trying to get you not to feel. Do this to fix it, make it go away. Trying to get you not to feel so that they could feel okay because they're not comfortable with emotions. You may want to rethink that. Is this a person that I want to go to in the future when I need to share um, that I'm having a bunch of feelings because they clearly are not comfortable with feelings and emotions. So here are your four new tools that are on your tool belt. Have a good time with them. Be aware of it. Be mindful of it. Go look for them in conversations. And once you catch it, once you see it, be aware of it, notice it, Feel free to share with me in the comments if you caught one of those. But the main thing is, know that you're dealing with somebody who's struggling and in pain and compassion. At the same time, you are allowed to keep yourself safe, protect yourself, and you may feel you need to make a decision to put a little bit of distance with you and the other person or simply not invest as much in the relationship. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed these four tips, please click that subscription button, the notifications button, share it with other people who are going through this. And keep in touch. I'll see you soon back here in the online therapy studio.